Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in the paradise of <clears throat> East Bumblefuck, New Mexico on what will be pretty much an 80 degree February day here on Friday, February 10th, 2017. So, me and the little dog we're going to head off in the gas-sucking truck, which I have not started in five days, to go on an adventure. But before we head out, I need to bring you my now two-part ecological meltdown roundup rant, where I simply open my email box for my four environmental news roundups. You know, just detailing how this planet is heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour with or without help from Donald Trump. So we're going to, and I will make this as painless as possible, we're going to make part one how we're heading into a brick wall. Well, I guess with Donald, the difference between a planet uh, with Donald Trump and without Donald Trump is pretty much this. <clears throat> in a planet without Donald Trump, we're heading into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. With Donald Trump on the planet, we're heading into a brick wall oh, at 77,000 miles an hour. That's the difference. We're just going to get to the brick wall a little bit closer uh, with Donald Trump at the helm. So let's see how Donald Trump this week is bringing this planet into a brick wall at 77,000 miles an hour, starting right here on the mainstream media at the Washington Post Energy and Environment News Roundup, which has pretty much just become a, a Donald Trump killing the planet uh, news roundup. Their first one, which I, I don't have time to get into this. I'm sure Alex Jones is doing a full rant on it. <clears throat> Senior Republican statesmen propose replacing Obama's climate policies with a carbon tax. Uh, th there you go. We, we have the, uh, the Republicans, senior Republicans, Calling for a carbon tax. I, I, uh, anyway, I don't honestly know how Donald Trump feels about that. That'll play out here in a, uh, over the next few weeks. Okay. Here is Green Group's file sweeping lawsuit accusing Donald Trump of usurping Congress's powers on regulations. The suit could mark the beginning of a major battle of the federal regulatory state under Trump. Yes, now of course, the, the, uh, the vast majority of the stories are uh, about the Dakota Access Pipeline. Probably half of these stories are about Trump, you know, green lighting the Dakota Access Pipeline and how this battle is shaping up. Uh, I need to get out my buttons here. Trump administration to approve final permit for Dakota Access Pipeline. <clears throat> and actually, it, it has been approved. And I guess the drill bits are there. I think the drill bits are actually turning right now as I speak. And so some some judge somewhere is going to decide whether he is going to overrule Donald Trump's green lighting. So maybe I mean this is all going to play out hopefully today. And hopefully we're going to get yet another judge slapping that fat-ass motherfucking planet eater down. But it's, uh, I'll bring you that rant when it happens. Uh, what does 
good old Sally Jewell have to say about this. Former Inter Interior Secretary Jewell says the Army Corps of Engineers is reneging on its co commitments to Dakota Access Pipeline. Uh, let's see what's going on at the EPA. The hearing was titled Making EPA Great Again, but scientists are afraid the opposite will happen. Yep, yep, yep. Here is Trump's energy plan does not mention solar power, an industry that just added 51,000 American jobs. Trump having no interest in an industry employing 51,000 Americans because it is a direct threat to his big uh, oil buddies such as Rex Tillerson and Rick Perry and Scott Pruitt. Speaking of Scott Pruitt, hundreds of current and former EPA employees urge Senate to reject Trump's nominee for the agency. Good luck on that. Uh, more and more stories on this, uh, on the Dakota Access Pipeline. This, as I say, this is, uh, th this story is still in play. So, uh, Washington Post and all of these places spilling all of this ink on Dakota Access. I really don't know how to call this one. Uh, I'm very encouraged to see to see all these U.S. vets uh, heading that way for a showdown, uh, a showdown in the snow. Uh, we will see. We will see. Okay, one more from the Washington Post. House Republicans just voted to repeal yet another environmental rule. The House action would repeal a regulation aimed at curbing methane emissions from oil and gas drilling operations on public lands. Just was reporting how our own esteemed governor here in New Mexico climbing on that bandwagon. Let's move over to Center for Biological Diversity. What do they have in their Trump roundup? Of course, their big story, Trump pushes ahead with Dakota Access Pipeline. This is, I love this guy's name, Kieran Suckling, the center's executive director. What is his quote on this? Quote, Trying to ram through the Dakota Access pipe Pipeline would be as despicable as it is cowardly. Not only will it have profoundly destructive environmental cost, but it is a slap in the face to the hundreds of tribal leaders and brave protectors speaking out to save their land and resources. But President Trump should know this, should know this. There is a massive resistance movement growing that will fight this project, as well as any other that threatens people, civil rights, wildlife, and the environment. There you go. Uh, what is going on with this planet-eating little fuckwad Ryan Zink? Trump's pick for, you know, the Interior Department, a whopping 170 conservation groups this week urged the U.S. Senate to reject Representative Ryan Zink as the next Interior Secretary. Uh, Zink, if confirmed, 
or is he already confirmed? I can't remember. Uh, will be in charge of the nation's more than 1,500 endangered species, not to mention 500 million acres of public lands and minerals leasing for oil, gas, and coal across the country and in our oceans. <clears throat> Zinc earned a whopping 3% rating from the League of Conservation Voters. This is Mr. Suckling again. Quote, Zinc's voting record qualifies him to be an exterminator, not the chief protector of America's endangered animals and beautiful public lands. Yep, yep, yep. And then their spin on BLM's methane rule uh, is under attack. Last Friday, industry-backed members of the House of Representatives continued their assault on the environment uh, to trying to dismantle a common-sense rule that would cut dangerous pollution from the oil and gas sector. Um, there you go, and you can take a wild guess on uh, what Donald Trump will have to say about efforts to uh, to cut methane from oil and gas projects on our public lands. All right, let's go over to Alternet. We looked at the mainstream media on Washington Post sounding pretty much identical to Alternet. Um, as they take on, you know, th this is good old my Humpty Dumpty tribe, Josh Fox. Uh, Trump may have approved the Dakota Access Pipeline, but the fight is far from over. There you go. Um, there, and then it's their spin on, uh, on Scott Pruitt, and then their spin on uh, this methane thing. Industry-backed Congress wants to roll back protections against dangerous methane pollution. Oh, shit. What is going on over there at the new USDA's website? Agriculture Department quietly removes animal welfare data from its website, sparking outrage from advocates. Yes, uh, here's yet another, oh, this is the Guardian's coverage of the Dakota Access <clears throat> major blow to Standing Rock Sioux, <coughs> final phase of Dakota Access Pipeline to be approved. I like this little story from from uh, EcoWatch, Swedish government belittles Trump with this all-woman photo. We'll get into that. Here is probably the no shit Sherlock story of the alternate roundup. How Rex Tillerson's aggressive stance towards China helps Exxon and Russian oil firms. Yes, Exxon and Russian state-owned oil companies have been angling to tap into the South China Sea's offshore oil and gas bounty, and I'm not going to get into another South China Sea rant except to say one more time, if you want to know where World War III is going to start, look to the South 
China Sea. One more story. Uh, this one from the Environmental Defense Fund. Here is why Trump's EPA pick, Scott Pruitt, would be terrible for the environment. Uh, anyway, guys, I I've heard about enough uh, of this goddamn... What did this... I, I wish I could remember so I could give him a, a humpty dumpty try cheer. One of these Pennsylvania state senators yesterday calling Donald Trump a lufus faced shit gibbon. I think he meant to say shit weasel, but you know, what has a gibbon ever done to be uh, insulted by being compared to Donald Trump? Donald Trump is, is a shit weasel. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up the Donald Trump portion of this week's Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant and come back at you with a Donald Trump free Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant. We're going to decelerate from 77,000 miles per hour into a brick wall to 67,000 miles per hour. Coming up in one minute for this rant. Bye, guys.